Hey skiers, I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. Uh, last year, if you follow our channel, you probably saw the video and article we did where we compared, uh, I believe it was six different uh, all mountain skis around 100 millimeters underfoot. Um, we got a lot of great feedback uh, and responses to that video and that article, um, and a lot of people asking us to do kind of the same thing, um, but with different categories of skis. Um, so we're going to do that this season, and we're starting it with uh, what I've been calling kind of 90 millimeter underfoot all mountain skis. Um, before we dive into it, uh, let's talk about some things that make this challenging. Um, this is a huge category of skis. Uh, even though we have a lot of models here, um, there's way more than this. Uh, so, you know, we don't have the resources or, or the time uh, to talk about every single ski in this category in a single article or vid video. Um, so definitely leave us a comment. Uh, if there's a ski that you don't see up here or that we don't talk about in the article, um, I can think of a lot just off the top of my head uh, that aren't here um, that, we, that we could talk about. So definitely let us know if there's something that you think we missed or something that you want to hear more about. Um, along the same lines, this, this is 11 skis. I think I could probably spend, I, I don't know, I could probably spend an hour talking about all these skis pretty easily. Um, but for the, uh, the sake of not having a video that's, that's an hour long, um, I'm going to run through them pretty quickly. Uh, so if, uh, if you think I missed anything about any of these models, or if there's something that you want us to circle back to, um, and give you some more detail on. Definitely let us know uh, because I'm I'm going to try and cover everything about all these skis, um, but I'm sure I'm going to miss something because I'm I'm human. Um, but let's dive right in. Uh, let's not waste any more time. Um, first off, we have the Vocal Kendo. Uh, this is a great ski. Um, it's been on the market for a really long time, um, and. I think it's a good ski to start with. This is the ski that we started talking about in the article and we're going to start talking about it in the video as well. Um, pretty versatile ski. Vocal refers to it as kind of the, the slimmer, I think they say slimmer brother to the mantra, um, which is a good way to describe it, uh, but the, the kendo has camber underfoot where the mantra doesn't. Um, so a little bit more responsive feel on firm snow. Um, the kendo is a ski with two sheets of metal. So we're going to talk about metal um, or construction of all these skis a lot. Um, two sheets of metal is going to be heavy. Um, it requires someone that is comfortable skiing at speed um, and comfortable with, you know, a significant amount of skier input into your skis. Um, they're not the lightest skis on the world, but that metal um, in the ski, the two sheets of metal has awesome uh, damping properties. Um, and the, the ski stays really quiet, um, especially for, you know, aggressive skiers. Um, and then the shape of the kendo, I think it's important to talk to talk about um, some subtle early taper in the tips and tails, but not much. Um, there is tip and tail rocker with camber underfoot. So a versatile shape for sure. Um, it's one of those skis, I'll, I'll probably circle back and, and talk about this. Um, more with, with these skis, but a fairly even mix of performance characteristics, in my opinion. Um, definitely a ski that you can ski anywhere on the mountain, um, but because it's got those two sheets of metal, you, you need to be a relatively aggressive skier to, to really make the most out of it. I would say anyone, anyone really could ski it, uh, intermediate and up, um, but those two sheets of metal are going to be more of a deterrent than a benefit um, if you're not overly aggressive. Uh, the same can kind of be said about the Blizzard Brahma. Um, this is a new Brahma for this season. Um, let's, see. let's see if we can split it apart here. So new Brahma for this season. They've shortened the turn radius um, just slightly. They've made the tip shape more abrupt. Um, there are some similar changes to the popular Bonafide, which is kind of the wider version of this ski as well. Um, but still two sheets of metal, um, still wood core ski. So, you know, we could say similar things about the Brahma as the Kendo. 
um, in the sense that it requires a, a relatively aggressive skier, um, relatively advanced. Um, I think the Brahma perhaps has the edge um, on, on groomers. Um, it has more full width tips and tails um, than, you know, it's subtle, but a little bit more so than, than the Kendo. Um, so longer effective edge on groomers, um, really great edge grip. Uh, but again, going to go back to this, those two sheets of metal um, requires a pretty aggressive skier. Um, I would say, I think we mentioned this in the article, but I would say the Brahma is a great choice for somebody who wants an all-mountain ski that they can take anywhere, um, but perhaps perhaps you have a, a groomer bias yourself. You, you prefer skiing on trail, um, but, but want the ability to take it off trail. It's, the Brahma is a great choice for that. Um, the Brahma CA, uh, this is another cool one. We didn't talk about it um, super long in the article, but I did mention it. Uh, just just putting this in my hand, it is so much lighter than the Brahma. Um, the difference here is the Brahma CA it uses a carbon-based construction instead of the metal laminates that we see in the normal Brahma. Um, so if you like the Brahma, if that shape kind of has always spoken to you, um, but you're a little bit turned off or weary of two sheets of metal, um, this is way, way lighter a little bit more user-friendly, um, but still ultra-responsive, um, just as versatile. Um, I would say it still has a little bit of a firm snow bias, but barely. Um, this, is, this is definitely a ski that you can take off-piste and, and do just fine. I think you could actually say that it'd be a little easier than the normal Brahma um, in you know terrain like moguls or, or tight trees, just because the swing weight's lower so it's easier to, to toss back and forth. Uh, Enforcer 93 from Nordica. This is another really important one, important one in this category um, and kind of continuing the theme of two sheets of metal here. So wood core, two sheets of metal, similar construction to the Kendo and the Brahma that we've already talked about. The difference here is the Enforcer 93. Obviously it's wider. Um, it is it is technically the widest out of all these skis, although some of you may be looking at that black ski on the end, which we'll get to. Um, it's the widest, and it's also got, in my opinion, a, a very free ride inspired shape. Um, this tip shape in particular, it's got quite a long rocker profile, and Nordica calls it a blunt tip. Um, some significant early taper in the tip as well. The Enforcer 93 is super maneuverable. Um, and, you know, I would say if the Brahma and the Brahma CA have a preference towards being skied on firm snow, um, the Enforcer 93 could maybe go the opposite with that and say that it, it, it has kind of an off-piste bias. Um, great, great tree ski, great mogul ski, especially here in Vermont. Um, you know, we don't often have like super deep snow in our woods, so it's, it's really fun for that. We've, we've tested the Enforcer 93 quite a bit, um, and, and we really like it. So definitely check out the more in-depth reviews, which reminds me, um, all of these skis were included in our 2018 ski test. Um, so you can go to those test results and read some, some more in-depth um, reactions to each ski and from multiple different testers, which is really cool. Um, this is a ski that kind of similar to the Brahma CA, we touched on it briefly in the article. The Nordica Navigator 90, um, you know, I feel like we had to include it because it's exactly 90 underfoot um, and not too many other of these skis are. So, you know, I would say if the Enforcer 93, um, that's kind of more free ridey, all mountain shape. Um, the Navigator leans a little bit more towards firm snow use. Um, it's got less metal in it, so similar to when I went to the Brahma CA from the Brahma, uh, this is noticeably lighter in my hand. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but they call it Hex Titanium Bridge. Um, so it's basically partial sheet of metal. There's uh, geometric shapes removed from that, that metal laminate. Um, the tip shape, you might notice, looks very, very similar to the Enforcer, where the tail shape is actually inspired by their Doberman 
race or, or carving ski is um, squared off tail or, or more squared off than the enforcer. Uh, it finishes a carving turn really, really well. These have relatively short turn radius too, um, something that could be said about a lot of Nordica skis right now. Um, but it makes them really, really fun, really responsive, really energetic, uh, makes, makes a bunch of different turn shapes pretty easily, um, which I think is fun. But yeah, so with Nordica now within their kind of about 90 millimeter all mountain skis, you've got the Enforcer 93, two sheets of metal, free ride inspired shape, um, and then you've got the Navigator 90, which less metal, more carving oriented shape. Um, so a couple options there. The Solomon XDR 88 Ti. Uh, this is a new ski from Solomon for this year. We did a long review last season of the XDR 84 Ti, which uh, essentially shares the same construction. Obviously, it's four four millimeters narrower. Um, but take a look at that review uh, if, if you if you want to learn a little bit more about about this series. Um, so. Big thing with the XDR, uh, they basically use a partial metal laminate. Um, if you look at the black portion of the ski, that's essentially showing you where the metal is in the ski. Um, and then it also uses CFX Super Fiber, which we talked about at great length in our QST99 and QST118 reviews. Um, pretty cool material. It's a woven blend of flax and carbon fiber. Um, so. The partial metal laminate, it's reducing some swing weight and also making the tips and tails a little bit more supple. Um, and then that flax um, and, and carbon, the flax actually continues with the same kind of damping, quiet properties of the metal. Um, and the carbon adds in some energy. Um, so definitely a really cool ski. Um, I think we're probably going to do some more reviews of the XDR series. Uh, I know quite a few of our staff members are, are trying to get on get on them a little more often this season. Um, but yeah, really cool sh ski, pretty versatile shape. Uh, if you see the tip shape, it's got some early taper up there. Um, so when we skied the XDR84, it, it really shined in moguls. Um, and they also lay down some, some really nice carves. Um, so another good one. Um, to kind of go back to the talk about metal and like the level of aggressiveness that you need to hit um, You definitely don't need to ski this as fast and as hard as some of the skis with two sheets of metal um, A little bit more approachable a little bit more forgiving um, But still a, a super high performing ski metal carbon flax. It, it's all there for sure um, All right, Dina star legend x88 if you're still with me, I'm still with me, so <laughs> let's keep going. Um, the Legend series is a brand new series for this season. Much like the XDR series is a brand new series for this season. Uh, the, there's Within the Legend series, there's a bunch of different shapes. and uh, Actually, excuse me, not a bunch of different shapes. They all kind of share the same shape, um, but a bunch of different constructions. So don't take this information about this ski and apply it to every, everything in the line. Uh, there, there are some differences, but basically what we have here, um, this uses a lightweight wood core. Uh, I believe it's Polonia wood core, or, it's, or it could be Karuba. Um, I, I believe it's Polonia, um, but very lightweight wood, um, and then it does have two sheets of metal. Definitely taking some inspiration out of the Dina Star Sham series. Um, significant, some significant amounts of, of early taper in the tips and tails. Um, Dina Star actually calls it five point side cut, um, which I'm I'm thinking about that right now because I'm looking at the side cut list on the on the ski and they don't list five numbers. But anyways, we'll we'll forget about that. They do they do call it five point side cut, um, which is really just another way to describe uh, this significant amount of early taper, um, both in the tip and the tail. So really versatile shape. Um, it's going to do really really well in soft snow. Dina Star has some videos out of their team skiing uh, different legend skis and just the way that these perform in soft snow for a ski this narrow is really cool. Um, so if you're if you want this waist width um, but two sheets of metal and a kind of free ride inspired shape um, this is kind of another one that, that sits there with the Enforcer 93 as, as being very maneuverable very versatile in softer snow conditions and, and variable snow conditions but 
still super powerful with those two sheets of metal. Alright, continuing. So, K2 Pinnacle 88. Um, this is another really important ski in this category, in my opinion. Last year when we did this with you know, 100 millimeter skis, we talked about the Pinnacle 95 and described it as possibly the smoothest ski in the category. And, you know, we have a lot more skis here and there are some there are some really smooth skis within this category and, and on this wall behind me. Um, but I still think that that title could go to the Pinnacle 88. Um, it's very approachable. Um, it's pretty easy to ski, uh, but it's got a really smooth, fun performance. They use metal laminates along the edges of the ski. Uh, K2 calls it conic technology. So basically really light materials in the center and then denser wood and metal along the edges so you get the smoothness and damping of, of metal. Um, but much lighter, uh, a little bit more user friendly. Uh, I think this is a great cruising ski, which I, I, every time I say that, I, I, it feels like somebody could perceive that as a negative comment, but I, I don't want you to think that at all. Um, it, it's just very quiet, very smooth, very relaxed, um, a really fun ski, and it transitions really well from firm snow to variable snow. Um, it doesn't buck you or kick you or anything. So, definitely a cool ski. Maybe you used to be really aggressive or your ability is progressing, but you don't really feel like you're ready for two sheets of metal yet, um, but you want a little bit more power out of your skis. I think the Pinnacle 88 is a great, great choice. Um, it's got a really long rocker profile on the tip, which I think is part of the reason why it has such smooth, kind of mellow feel and, and stays really quiet and relaxed through through changes in snow conditions. Um, so yeah, great ski. And then Atomic Vantage 90 CTI. Uh, I think in the article I mentioned that this is ultimately somewhat similar to the Pinnacle in the sense that it uses a partial sheet of metal, um, but kind of the opposite. In this ski, the metal uh, runs down the center of the ski, and then they use Atomic's carbon tank mesh. Uh, which we could compare to similar to the CFX Superfiber, um, similar to Carbon Alloy Matrix that we're going to talk about in the Experience Ski. Um, but basically, another woven style of carbon fiber um, adds in a lot of energy and torsional stiffness. So I would say similar things about the Atomic as the K2. It's it's pretty approachable, um, but you, you up the responsiveness from the Pinnacle um, requires a little bit more skier input, I would say. It's got, it doesn't have the same amount of early taper and, and tip rocker, uh, wider tips, almost more of an XDR 88 shape, um, which, which makes sense because Solomon and Atomic have, have some ties to each other. Um, but really, really cool ski. Another one that's really versatile, and I would say going back to a ski like the Kendo, um, this is another one where with the shape and the construction and everything, it's just a really even mix of performance characteristics. So, you know, maybe you're the type of skier that doesn't have a preference of terrain or conditions. You just really want to ski everything and you want pretty even performance across the board. Uh, this, is, this is a great choice and a little bit lighter than the Kendo um, because it uses less metal. So, something to consider as you are choosing your skis. Uh, let's see, this is the Rossignol Experience 88 HD. Um, we actually just did a full length review of this ski last week, um, so check that out on Chairlift Chat. Um, we go way more in, in depth and, and there's some video footage of us skiing it. So, another great ski. Um, this one's, gosh, let's see. It's not totally unique in the sense that it doesn't use metal, but it's one of three skis on this wall that doesn't use metal. Um, so, somewhat of a rarity in this in this range of 90 millimeter-ish all-mountain skis that are, that are high-performance skis. Um, so, Carbon Alloy Matrix is really where the performance comes from in the Experience 88 HD. It's exceptionally light, um, one of the lighter skis in this collection or, or in this group. Um, basically, a carbon alloy matrix is very, very similar to carbon tank mesh, 
it's kind of a woven grid of carbon fiber. Um, you know, this is definitely a ski where the shape der is derived from more carving oriented skis. Um, so if you're a skier, much like how we compared the Brahma to the Enforcer 93 or even Brahma to Kendo, um, if you personally prefer skiing on firmed, firm groomed snow conditions, um, the Experience 88 is a great shape for that. It's got full width tips and tails, so really, really long uh, edge, edge connection to the snow, a great feel, um, great edge grip, especially considering it doesn't use metal. Um, and, and it actually stays pretty quiet and, and pretty damp, which, which is impressive for something that doesn't use metal. Um, so, groomer-oriented skier that doesn't want metal, um, a great choice for somebody who maybe doesn't ski super fast, um, but that's another thing that, like, every time I say that, I feel like it's probably perceived as a negative. It's still a ripping ski. It's still super responsive. Like I said, great edge grip, great energy, great kind of pop and snap in and out of turns. Um, but much lighter, a little bit less demanding because no metal. Uh, it does have kind of the classic Rosignol honeycomb tip, so some reduced swing weight up there. Um, and a, just a great ski. Um, and I, I'll leave you with... Just remember that there's no metal in that ski, um, so it's going to be lighter, um, a little easier swing weight. I would say something I, I often mention with lighter weight skis is they're less fatiguing over a long day of skiing. You know, maybe you take like one, if, if you're out testing a bunch of skis, and you take one run on a ski with two sheets of metal and then one run on the Experience 88 HD, you probably won't notice that you're significantly more tired coming off the skis with metal or you're not going to come off the ski or off the Experience 88 after one run and be like, oh, I have so much energy. Um, but over a long day of skiing, you know, if you're out there for six hours, even just like the weight of the skis on the lift, it, it plays into your fatigue levels. Um, all right, last ski here. And this is one that, gosh, look at it. It doesn't fit into this category at all. <laughs> this is the Head Core 105. Um, and, you know, we're including this ski in here because we actually already sold out of our first batch of Core 93s. So, the head Core 93 is really the one that we should be talking about here, um, but we don't have any right now, so we're going to hold up the 105 and, and talk about the 105. Um, exceptionally light. This thing is really light. I mean, I've been holding a bunch of 90 millimeter skis and now I'm holding a 105 millimeter ski and it's super light. Um, graphene, Karuba, Choroid, and Carbon are kind of the four key elements that go into this ski. Um, total redesign from head on, on this collection of all mountain skis and they're really cool. They're really quiet. Um, it, it, you know, it's one of those things where you ski it and it's like, ah, are they lying? Are, are, are you sure there's no metal in there? Because it's really stable, um, it's really quiet, but because it's so much lighter, it's really easy to pop and snap around. Um, when I first saw this ski, obviously this, this shape, or the 105 is much wider, um, but the, one of my first thoughts was, hey, that shape looks pretty similar to an Enforcer, um, and I still think it does. Um, so. Pretty similar and in, in kind of intended use, I would say, for the Core 93 to, to Enforcer 93, um, but lighter, so much lighter. So if you're, you know, some people want two sheets of metal, they kind of like a heavy ski because it stays super ultra quiet and kind of glued to the snow. Um, people that want similar shape but a much lighter ski um, now have a great option in, in the Core 93. Um, so. Yeah, we're going to leave it there. Um, hopefully there was some information in there that, that's going to help you uh, choose a ski, choose your next all-mountain ski, or just understand the differences between, between all these skis, because th there's so many and there's a, a pretty significant um, range of, of, we'll call it subtle, subtle differences, um, but there's still significant differences. Um, so. Like I said, to start, let us know if you have any questions. Uh, I know this is not every ski in this category. Um, I think it's a pretty cool representation of the category, but you know there, there are brands even that, that we couldn't include in here um, just for a, 
a time and, and length constraint. Um, so let us know if there's anything else that you want us to talk about. Um, we are planning on doing kind of more in-depth reviews of a lot of these skis. Uh, I think you'll definitely see a Brahma CA and maybe maybe both of those skis together as an in-depth review. I think definitely some legend reviews are are in the pipeline. Um, and yeah, we'll try and uh, get out on as many of these skis as can and uh, film, film some more skiing on them and, and let you know some more in-depth reactions. Uh, but until then, let us know your thoughts, let us know your questions and comments, and we will see you guys on the slopes pretty soon. Uh, we, we had frost this morning in, in Stowe, so we definitely have the itch, the skiing itch around here. So we'll see you guys on the slopes soon. Thank you very much, and I hope you enjoy the video.